to make an impact, and people are. People like John Irwin are. Coming off October Baby, the producer of October Baby, he has put out another movie along with his brother called Mom's Night Out. John is on the line with us right now. The film did four point something million last last weekend, big opening weekend, but the critics came out swinging. A very popular movie, did well, and the critics are bashing this movie, and I just can't understand why. It, John, welcome. How you doing? Thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's great to be with you. Okay, first of all, tell us about Mom's Night Out, the movie itself. What's the subject? Obviously, well, Mom going out, but go ahead. You know what I mean. Yeah, Mom's Night Out is just a, a laugh out loud, you know, family comedy, PG comedy, and you know, it's it's meant to. I watch how hard my wife works, you know, with our three kids. You know, men, you know, the three haven't. You know, my daughter has inherited all my my ADHD and you know, <laughs> the characteristics that I have, and so and so. You know, I see what what she puts herself through and, and how how hard it is, but also how important it is, and so. I wanted to make a comedy, my brother and I and producer Kevin Down, that, you know, gave uh, my wife and couples like us that are in the midst of parenthood, you know, a chance to laugh together and to escape and also for her to be affirmed and understand how valuable and how important she is. And especially in this age of comparison, where I think 40% of women are depressed because, you know, they don't feel like they measure up to what they see on the front of magazine covers or on Pinterest and Facebook. You know, I wanted to give, make a movie that reminded them, you know, how incredibly valuable and worthwhile they are and how much God loves them just for who they are. And it's amazing to see the response across social media this week and just how much people love the movie and how much they say. I mean, the main comment is, that's me, that's my story, and how did you have cameras in my house? And this is so <laughs> affirming, and I feel, I have, you know, my favorite one, somebody said, I feel like this gives a voice to moms like me, and... People love it, and so, yes, so to have that kind of response from an audience, but then to get, um, I think, uh, critique in the way by the, I don't care what they say about the movie, but for critics to come after our way of life, I think that's alarming and that's a part of a bigger trend. Yeah, I want to get to a few of those comments, but I just have to recognize how much I love what you're doing with this. I saw, I've seen the, the preview, and... I was laughing. I love the fact Trace. I mean, you get Trace Atkins, who is just solid in, in in his delivery. Patricia Heaton. I mean, you've got a great cast here, and you're recognizing what, quite frankly, all of us as husbands recognize. They do so much, and they are so discounted. As, That's right. And and it, it's sometimes moms will call in, mothers will call in, and say, "Okay, I'm a, I'm a mother." And they, they will say, well, I don't have a job or something along those lines. I say, whoa, whoa. No, it, mothers have like an extra arm, I'm sure of it, someplace. <laughs> they right. do extra work. They're always, they, they, they're, they're extraordinary. Husbands, we will sit there and I will do one thing. And, and I'm ashamed to say this, but I've got to admit it. One thing, and I'll point to it for six months. Hey, I, I did the laundry. Yeah, that was yeah, six months ago. Right. One basket. I did. I did. You know? Yeah, you know, you know, I think moms, and even my own wife, she said several times, you know, well, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. And I asked her, how many times have you said that just a stay-at-home mom? And the movie celebrates mothers uh, of all types, single moms, right. full-time working moms, stay-at-home moms, and it's meant to be a celebration of motherhood and a, and a celebration of parenthood. And it's a, it's a movie uh, men and women mutually enjoy but it is meant to affirm and say, you know, what you do is important. And, yeah, guys, take your wife to this movie. Just trust me. Like, I, I, I'm lobbing you a softball here, you know. So it's a lot of fun in a the movie theater. We are very grateful. I'm speaking for husbands who are going to watch the movie. I know husbands that have watched the movie are, are going, thank you, thank you. But here's the question. <laughs> you get people from Newsday, the critic, uh, Rafar Guzman, called it unintentionally grotesque. And worthy of damnation. Well, what happened here? <laughs> I, mean, I saw the preview. I, I can't imagine. I'm like, what? What are yeah, they doing here? Any sense. And when that same critic calls Nymphomaniac 
um, you know, intelligent, uh, intelligent and intellectual, you know, explicit and uh, you know, explicit but intelligent. It just shows a double standard. And again, to me, because that movie is totally unrateable and unwatchable, and, and yet it's praised as a work of art. And you know, even though it depicts violent and graphic uh, things, you know, that that are damaging to people's minds. And so, to me. Uh, again, the, the issue with it, you know, I love, it's a badge of honor, honestly, the disparity between the critics and the audience. And to see this, like, 86% audience approval rating with thousands of audience members rating the film and, you know, a 15% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I love that because that says, hey, this is a movie that, this is an audience that critics don't understand that I'm more than happy to represent in the words of Walt Disney. I don't make movies, you know, we're not trying to entertain the critics. I make movies for the people. But what alarmed me about the critic reviews is they go well beyond the movie, and they, like, one of them said that basically Allison's lack of profession condemns the character into Eisenhower S. irrelevance. Another one said this character is offensive to moms who have so much more to deal with in life. Okay, you've gone beyond insult mm -hmm. the movie, insult me as the filmmaker, but do not insult my wife and the tens of millions of women that live like her and have made that life choice and want to be affirmed by society. And society, this is another example of how society tells them that they're worthless. And that is ridiculous, and I think a part of a larger trend. Uh, you know, again, uh, Chrissy with uh, Roger Ebert called the film uh, regressive and borderline dangerous. And to me, that says that my life is somehow offensive and borderline dangerous. And that is, that is alarming to me and should be talked about. It should be talked about. It also identifies part of what we deal with in, in so many different areas as the body of Christ, as, as, as Christians, as fallen as, as we are, but uh, recognizing God loves us, He created us, He, he created, and, and that's the other thing, that we want to talk about how much God loves each and everybody and, and everyone, and there's a narrative out there that goes and, and attempts to, at times look at us as a bunch of haters and what do we receive when we simply put forth a movie or you all put forth a movie that has characters who are mothers and are taking care of kids at home stay-at-home moms and somehow that receives it's condemned tell me we all what we want to do is we want to tell the truth about our way of life about God, we want that opportunity to do so. And it seems that in entertainment, until the likes of what you do and, and David A.R.Y. and so many folks are doing now, which is tr transformative, certainly. But we want to tell the truth, and we want to get it out there, and we also that's want to right. support movies that, uh, that do right. this. So how do and we do it? That's the beauty of it. That's yeah. the beauty of it is that film is a democracy, entertainment is a democracy, and they can't stop it. They can't stop it. And, uh, and they can try. They can berate us for our way of life. They can criticize us. And you see it all around us right now. And I think that there's a real um, conversation that's starting that I'm excited about, whether it's comm commencement addresses being canceled or the Benham Brothers or, you know, uh, Mozilla. You know, all these stories of uh, people are starting to ask, is this the America we want to live in? where there's this blatant intolerance and bully tactics unless you comply. In fact, in USA Today this morning, uh, Kirsten uh, Powers wrote, will, liberal, will the liberal thought police come for you? And she said, welcome to the Dark Ages. Part two, we slipped into an age of unenlightenment where you fall in line behind the mob or face the consequences. And she's critiquing her own. And right. I think that that's absolutely right. But here's the thing. They can't stop the movies, and entertainment is a democracy, and your movie ticket and, and is your vote. And the DVDs you buy, that's your vote. And what channel you have the TV on at night, that's your vote. And the more of these products that come out, I think Mark Burnett nailed it when he said, this is the year of the faith-based film. The more of these products that come out and are supported, the more will be made. And they can't stop us from getting our voice back because of the way the entertainment system is structured. So Mom's Night Out is in theaters right now, and it's our way of life on screen. And I encourage everyone to, uh, let's go support the way we live. You know, Wolf of Wall Street, that's not the way we live. No. But, uh, and so uh. the idea is this is this is who we really are, and, and I'm so happy to see the audience rally around it.
Well, John, I want to check back in with you next week, if possible. See, that's how I book the interview, get you on the spot to say, oh, yeah, Crane, I'll do it. Right? Hey, and, uh, and I want to do that because I want, be, I want you to know that people are listening right now, and we're desiring this, and we love it. And, and you mentioned Mark Burnett, who's changing Hollywood, and it's awesome. There's so many untold stories out there. We appreciate you. Mom's Night Out, that's the movie. Go this weekend, see it. That's the way to vote, right, right John? That's absolutely right, and, you know, it is. In Hollywood, we're actually kind of oppressed, and you can lose your job if you're a conservative uh, you know, or a Christian. And the cool thing is people are, people are being willing to be bolder. With, as this happens, people in Hollywood are being willing to be bolder about their faith, bolder about their values, and it's going to be a landslide, and I don't think they're going to be able to stop it. And I think two, three years from now, we're going to look back and we realize we've reclaimed our voice and culture, and we all did it together. And I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, John, we're, we're, we're just grateful, and uh, not only speaking for husbands, but everybody, but I especially like your movie. My wife happens to work and, uh, at a job outside the home, but also as a mother, obviously, and she was a stay-at-home mom for the first part of her, for the kids' lives, and I thank Christ for that. I, I mean, that's just amazing. And I think to myself, yeah. I look at so many women, single moms, working moms, stay-at-home moms, I, I, I just got a real problem with the discounting of what they do. It's just wrong, and they're extraordinary. And you mentioned the magazines and the social media of how things look and see. I mean, just stop it. And the That's way right. to stop it is to compete, get the truth out there, and you do it That's in right. an entertaining way. Mom's Night Out, That's John right. Irwin. Thank you, brother. Hey, God bless